What's up everybody and welcome to the second video of my coding a decision tree classifier from scratch video series. In the previous video, we completed the first part of our API, which was to load in our data into a pandas data frame, and then also to get it into the right format for our decision tree algorithm. And then we also built the first function, which split our data frame into a training and testing data set. And now we want to start to build the second function, which is the actual decision tree algorithm. And therefore, we first need to build all those helper functions. And this is what this video and the next couple of videos are going to be about. And before we start, however, I want to mention that initially I built all those functions and the decision tree algorithm using just the pandas library. But then I realized that the algorithm was relatively slow, even for small data sets, like for example, the Titanic data set. And so then I rebuilt all those functions and the algorithm using uh, NumPy instead. And this turned out to be about 10 times faster. So the functions that we're going to build won't operate on a pandas data frame, but instead they will operate on a NumPy 2D array. And we can get that array by using the data frame uh, attribute value values. And this is what it looks like. And since this now only contains the actual data and no additional information, like for example, the column names or the row indices, let's store this 2D array in a vari variable called data. And let's also print out the first five rows. So um, from now on, whenever I'm using a, vari a variable called data, I'm referring to such a NumPy 2D array. And whenever I'm using a variable called DF, I'm referring to such a pandas data frame. Okay, so now let's build the first function, the first type of function, which is this one, data pure. So let's create a subheading for that. And let's write data pure. And this function should uh, simply check if a certain partition of our data contains just one class, which means it is pure, or if such a partition contains uh, several classes, which means it is not pure. So let's call this function check purity, and we pass in our data. So a NumPy 2D array. And then this function should return a boolean so true if the data is pure and false if it is not pure and now to determine how many classes there are in the data we obviously have to access this last column and the way that indexing such numpy 2d arrays works is with this brackets notation and with such a comma inside the brackets and the expression in front of the comma specifies which rows we want to access. So in our case, we want to have the values from all the rows. So we're going to simply say colon and the expression after the comma specifies which column we want to access. And since we only want to have this last column, we're going to write minus one. And this is also the reason why one condition of our format for the data is that the last column of the data frame must contain the label. In this way, we can make sure that this function and other function always access the right columns. So now let's run the cell. And here we get an array that contains all the values of this label column. So let's store this array in a variable called label column. And now, to determine if the data is pure, we obviously have to know how many distinct classes there are in this array. And luckily, there's a NumPy function called unique that tells us exactly that. And here we simply pass in our label column, and then it returns an array with the unique values of this label column. In this case, it's Iris Tosa, Iris Kala, and Iris Virginica. So let's store this array in a variable called unique classes and now to check 
if the data is, if our data here is pure we simply have to test if or check if the length of the unique classes array is equal to one so there's just one class which means the data is pure and we can then return in this function a true otherwise we will return a false <clears throat> and this now is our check purity function so let's copy that and paste it into the function and now let's check if it works as we intend to so if we pass in our original training data and here we have to make sure that we use the values attribute so that if we pass in such a numpy to the array this function should now return a, a false because there are three classes so let's see if that's the case and it does and now let's filter this data so that it only contains uh, flowers with a pattern width that is smaller than 0 0.8 so we're going to say train the f dot pattern width smaller than 0 0.8 so this way we're only passing in those data points so the function should return a true because there's just one class and it does <clears throat> And now let's pass in only flowers with a pattern width that, are, that is bigger than 0 0.8. So only those data points. And now the function should again return a false. And it does. And so the function seems to work as we uh, expected to. So now we can build the next function. And it's going to be this one, the classify function. So let's create another subheading for that. And let's write classify and let's also call this uh, function classify data and here we again pass in our data and this time the function should return a classification <clears throat> so uh, one of the possible classes that the label of the data set can take on so in our case this classification should be a string that says either iris tosa iris versicolor or iris virginica and to determine this classification we obviously have to also access uh, this label column so we can copy this line of code and now to create our classification we simply can pick one element from that label column because the data is already pure because this function is only run if the data is pure so we pick simply one element from that label column and we're going to pick the first one and this could already be <coughs> our classify data function but we're going to do it uh, slightly different because as you may remember when we talked about the theory behind this decision tree algorithm there were some cases where we would want to classify the data even though it might not be pure yet for example if you want to have a minimum number of data points and if you don't have those data points then we classify the data based on which class appears most often of the different classes appear equally often then we simply randomly pick one and uh, since we eventually want to provide such functionality for our decision tree algorithm we're going to build this classify data function in this way and the good thing is that this function then will also be uh, able to work in this situation because if the data is pure then there's just one class and obviously that's also the class that appears most often so we don't have to buy uh, build two classify functions because this function will, uh, will work in both situations so to build a function this way we obviously also need to access this label column so we only have to delete this line of code and now to determine which class appears most often we are again making use of the numpy unique function and we pass in again our label column but this time we are making or we're taking advantage of another argument that we can pass to this function which is the return counts argument and we set it to true and this now returns two uh, arrays the first one is again the unique values uh, from this label column and the second one tells us how often those uh, classes 
appeared. So in this case, there were 46 iris dorsal flowers, 42 iris versicolor, and 42 iris virginica. So let's store this first array in a variable called, again, unique classes. And the second array is simply the counts of those unique classes. And now to determine to determine uh, which class appears most often, we need to know the index of the largest value of the second array. And that index we can then use to index this first array to get the name of the class that appears most often. And the way that we get that index of the largest value is with an array method called argmax. And we're going to use that method on the counts unique classes array. So we're going to say counts unique classes dot argmax. And this now should return a zero. And that's because the first element of this array is the largest. So let's see, let's see if that's the case. And it is. And that's now our index. And that index we can use to index this unique classes array, which um, looked like this. Whoops unique classes. So if we want to, or if we pick the first element, then this function should now return Aristotosa. So let's see if that's the case. And it is. And that's now obviously our classification. Because that's the class that appears most often in this data. And that's now our classified data function. So let's copy it and paste it into the function. And now let's see if it works as we expect. So let's first pass in again, only flowers with a pattern width below uh, 0 0.8. So we're going to say classify data, train df brackets, train df, oops, train df dot pattern width and smaller than 0 0.8. Eight. And here again, we have to make sure that we pass in uh, the NumPy to the array, another data frame. So in this case, we are now again passing in on, only those data points. So we should get an iris setosa, a string that says iris setosa. And it does. And now let's only pass in flowers with a pattern width smaller than 1.2. So we're only passing in those data points. And this time, there are also some isocicolor flowers included, but the majority of the dots are still irisotosa. So this function should again return irisotosa, and it does. And now, let's pass in only flowers with a pattern width bigger than 1.2. So only those data points. And here the majority of dots is blue, so we should now get iris virginica. And we do. And now, finally, let's pass in flowers with a pattern width between 0 0.8 and 2. So we're going to say the pattern width should be bigger than 0 0.8. And at the same time, the pattern width should be below 0. So now we are passing in flowers between with pattern width between 0 0.8 and 2, so only those data points. And here the majority is orange, so now we should get iris versicolor. And that's the case. So the function seems to be working properly, and this concludes the first part of building all those helper functions. And in the next video, we're going to build this function, the potential splits function. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.